Hello everyone! In today's edition of Classroom Digital Tools, we're going to take a look at Gmail and specifically we're going to look at how to create a Gmail list, how to add people to that list, and how to modify information about the people who are on that list. So, let's get started. Are several ways to create a Gmail group list. The very first way is if someone has already sent you an email with a large number of people who you want to include in the Gmail list, simply access that email. Click on show details next to the list of people that the email was sent out to. Highlight that list. Right-click, copy, then click on the down arrow next to the word that says mail in the top left, click on contacts, wait, then in this screen, on the left-hand side, click on new groups, enter in the name for the group, and make certain that's something memorable. In this case, I will type in full teacher list 2017 to 2018. Click OK. Go up to the search bar here. Type in name that list again. And if it was the first time that you've ever used this particular name, it will auto populate. So click on the appropriate selection. You can see now all the people who are in that group, and as is evident, there are no contacts in this group. So to add people into this group, click on this icon right here, which looks like a person. Right click, paste all those names in there, and click add. 134 contacts have been added to the full teacher list, 2017 to 2018. Now, if I wanted to compose an email to all those people, I simply go back to contacts over here on the left-hand side, click on, the, click on the arrow next to it to bring up the drop-down box, click on mail, wait, click on compose. In the to field, I begin typing in the name of that list. You can see it appear here. And by clicking on that, I have all 131 contacts ready to go for that email. But for this example, I'm going to exit out of this. So I'm going to discard the draft by clicking on the trash can. Let's go back to the contacts. So we go to the drop down box, we click on mail, then go down to contacts. Right then, let's say you want to add information to a pre-existing contact. First of all, you locate that contact on the list and you simply click on an area next to the name of that contact. For this example though, I am going to create a fake contact and I will do that by clicking on Add to my contacts, typing in a fake name here, and then clicking on the word add right below the field. A example has been added to my contacts. Right then. So now I want to adjust information regarding this particular contact. I click on this white area right here next to the name of the contact. I can now adjust the name of the contact by simply clicking on the person's name, typing in the change, and clicking outside of that area. I can add a note about the contact, such as contacts birthday is June 7th. Click outside of that again, and the information gets saved. 
I can add information such as the person's work address, the person's work email, like an example at gmail.com. And by clicking on this tab here that says add, I can add all sorts of categories of information regarding this contact. If I ever need to change an email, I go up here to the email address, I click on it, and then I simply click on the garbage can to delete that email information. To go back to my previous screen, in this case the main contact screen, I click on this arrow that says back to my contacts. The contact is now down here because these are listed in alphabetical order by the contact's first name. If I ever decide to delete a contact, I simply click on the checkbox next to the name, go up to the tab up here that says more, and click on delete contact. The contact has now been deleted. If I change my mind, I just click on Undo. Right then, so let's say you have a small group and you just want to enter in the information one by one. You can go ahead and do that as well. Click on New Group, enter in the name of the group, in this case 2017 to 2018, school administrators, click on OK, the group has been created, in the search bar, go ahead and type in the name of that group, click on the name of the group, a message box will appear indicating that there are no contacts in this group. To add people to this group on a one-by-one -one basis, you simply click on the icon representing a person, and you begin typing in the names. And again, names will auto-populate if you have people in your contact list that have that first name. This makes it a lot e easier because you can simply select the name of the person and click on the word add. So David Allen has now been added to the school administrator list. Do this again for another administrator, Robert Simpkins. I click on his name, and I click on the word add. I can also go back to the main contact list, and I can click on the check boxes next to names of the people that I would like to add to that list. An example here would be Beverly Moore, and Elizabeth Dahlman, and Kevin Daughtry. Once I have all the desired names selected, I go up to here to the group icon, I click on it, I then click on the name of the list I would like to add them to. In this case, that would be Triple S Administrators 2017 to 2018. I click on that list, and then I click on Apply. Three contacts have been added. Now, one name was not added to this list because that name is on a separate page. If you have a name on another page, you have to go to that page by clicking on the next icon in the top right near the gear shift icon representing settings. Find the name from that list. In this case is Maritza Rosado. Click on the checkbox. Click on the group name. Find the name of the group and click Apply. The reason that needs to be done separately is if you move on to a second page and 
put check marks next to the names, you will lose all the check mark names on the previous page. One more thing about Gmail. You may share your Gmail groups with others and others may share them with you. To share a Gmail group with someone else, click on More, Export, choose the group that you want to share with someone else, make certain that the tab next to Google CSV format is checked, CSV stands for Comma Separated Value, and click on Export. The file will now be saved to your hard drive. You may share this file with others as an attachment in email. And when someone chooses to open this file, it will open up in Microsoft Excel. And a person may expand the column out to take a look at the people who are in that list and what their emails are. If someone shares a CSV file with you, go up to More, click on Import, choose the file, select it from your hard drive, because you will have already downloaded it as an attachment from the email. Double click on the file and click on Import. However, realize that if you import a CSV file, into your contact list, you may be creating duplicate records. To eliminate duplicate records, go up to More and click on Find and Merge Duplicates. Thank you everyone for watching this episode of Classroom Digital Tools. Please subscribe, like this video, comment upon it, and share it with others. Your support is greatly appreciated.